yeah, I think that that, you know, just coming, you're, you were a youth pastor, I was a youth pastor, and we're talking to youth pastors here. And one of the things that, um, that I just love about that is that that's just a monumental amount of work to come up with social media links and uh, the texting service that you guys offer that send reminders to kids' phones and um, the Uversion app. And that just us working together and having Apex be a part of uh, the language in Heartwork. It's just been yeah. a ton of work there. And so all that work is done for a youth pastor. Um, and like we were saying before, it, it helps students go from, um, from Wednesday, Sunday to all of a sudden now, seven days a week, this is on my heart and mind. And God yeah. is using those moments throughout the day to really speak to their hearts about That's what's right. going on. But that I think is a super powerful opportunity for a youth group, uh, not just the individuals, but the group to do that together. Um, yep. I just think that that's a significant opportunity. And so we've, uh, we've, been, we've been talking about hard work with some of our youth pastors. We've been sending out some communications and um, some have already bought the kit and jumped in and are preparing to join uh, hard work this spring. Uh, but there's a bunch of guys who are uh, guys and girls who are watching uh, today and they're, they're wondering, Hey, if I'm going to do heart work to the fullest extent, what, what do I have to do to lead a great heart work campaign in our student ministry? Can you just speak to that a little bit, like your experience over the last well, 10 years or so, um, what you've seen is kind of key things that leaders have to do to lead a great uh, heart work uh, campaign in their student ministry. Yes. And, and this is, you know, back from the very beginning with our group and over the years, all the groups I've seen that have amazing success. These are the, the key ingredients. And first of all, is strong leadership, David. Mm. And that shouldn't be surprising, right? For any of us. I mean, if we're, when we get excited about something and we lead that uh, we're going to have people follow us. And so uh, time and time again, the, the most amazing campaigns that we've seen happen have been where there's a strong leader involved. So, so I would encourage all of you who are listening, if you're going to jump in to do this, the Apex 30 Days of Heart Work, to, to first just say, Lord, break my heart. Mm. I know for me, when I started, uh, I, my focus was on our students, not on an orphan crisis. But the Lord convicted me and then started to break my heart. And it was, oh, it was painful, but so good at the same time. And I realized, well, I do have a responsibility for this issue or for homelessness or for widows or whatever in the world. It's all God's people, and we're all called to be ministering to all these different needs. But yes, my primary responsibility is my students. But look at the opportunity I have here. If I can get my students excited about this and help them understand that at the core of this, caring for the poor and knowing God are interconnected. Mm -hmm. They cannot be separated. And there are scriptures all throughout the Old and New Testament that teach us that. And so that, and that was really, again, back to the, the impetus for us in the first place. We want our kids to know God. And we started looking at, you know, like Jeremiah 25, or sorry, Jeremiah 22, where it says he defended the cause of the poor and the needy. And so all went well. Is that not what it means to know me, hmm. says the Lord? And we're going, okay. So you see my point? Our, we're, we know our responsibility as youth pastors is to disciple our kids. We don't want to get distracted with some other thing out there. But for me, when I realized, oh, those are one and the same. Mm -hmm. Calling my students to serve others is calling them to come closer to knowing who God is yes. and knowing yeah. who they are in him. And so that was a game changer for me. So it's strong leadership, lead with passion. Uh, and demonstrate it too. Hey guys, I'm eating beans and rice as well. I'm going to sleep on the floor as well. Hey, I'm giving a, my money as well. So, uh, so leading that way. And then the second thing, and you heard this in our original story is to have an audacious goal. Mm. If, if you say, okay, we have 20 students in our group and, and, and if we each brought, you know, $20 over the course of the month, we, you know, don't, don't just do calculations in your head and try to come up with a good safe number have an audacious goal. Whatever you logically feel like your group could handle, double or triple or quadruple that. You know, mm -hmm. And honestly, just pray and say, Lord, what would you have us do? But mix faith with your logic. And, and, and I think that's how you can come to the goal of what are you going to try to do as a group. 
and and there's there's a spiritual component to that, but there's also a really practical component, and and it's this: it, it, when we give our students a challenge, that it feels almost like a dare. Like I dare you, I right. dare you to do this. There, you know, there is this there's this nature in us as, when we're young that we want to challenge. We want to rise up to something. It almost Not just feels when like, we're young, we want the challenge yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> true. That's true. But you know, there, there's almost this like the, this rebellion. Let, let's give our students a chance for a holy rebellion, for, yeah. for a righteous rebellion, to, to do something radical for the kingdom of God mm. and for others. And so if we say, hey, everybody bring 10 bucks, you know, it's like, oh, on the way to church, hey, mom, can I have $10? Right. But when it's like, guys, we have to be in this all in with our heart and soul. Like I said earlier, blood, sweat, and tears every day over these 30 days. That's a whole different thing. And so the audacious goal is actually more connected to the discipleship of your students than it is to the outcome of the project. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. So the, I love the project that you guys have chosen, David. I'm so excited about it. And I, uh, for, for all you guys who are tuning in, I was telling David earlier that my wife and I actually were like, every time we get feedback about the project, which I'm sure David will talk more about, mm -hmm. we, we're like, we want to go. We want to go over there. We want to see these kids. Like, it's just amazing. Right. So we are really thrilled uh, for this project and believing God for big things for the outcome. But again, it, the, the change that's going to happen in your students when they have an audacious goal is really what we're after. So the audacious goal, I've got two more things. The other one is personal sacrifice from the students. So that may be a little bit redundant, but because you're kind of hearing me say that, but this just goes back to you guys, as you're leading your students, don't, don't stress out and, and think, okay, I need to plan a, uh, a bake sale and a spaghetti dinner and a car wash. Uh, if you want to do something like that, that's, that's a great idea. We've seen lots of groups have great success by planning an event or two. Um, but don't do too much of that because you want to make sure your students feel the ownness to live mm -hmm. differently, to personally sacrifice. So and they are spend personally. Themselves. Yeah, to spend, spend themselves. themselves. Yeah, and, and if they show up at a car wash and work for six or seven hours, that's spending themselves. But, but give them opportunities to live it out every day and to go, okay, I'm going to skip out on lunch today and I'm going to give that money away and I'm going to go work and I'm going to go mow lawns or I'm going to shovel snow in, at this time of year. Um, what, whatever it is, I'm going to give of myself individually, personally, but then collectively as a group, we're doing this together. So personal sacrifice from your students. And then the last one is to really call the parents and mm. the adults of the church in. Let them get behind the students. So let them know what your students are doing. If you have opportunity on a, in a Sunday service in your church to, to get five minutes on the stage to tell them what's going, the church what's going on, or if the senior pastor is willing to tell. We, we've even had groups where, um, this was actually just a few months ago, where a group the senior pastor was so excited. He actually led the entire congregation through the 30 days of heart work teachings on those Sundays and got behind the students project. And then you get like, like we originally had the, the man in our church who said he would match up to $60,000. Look for people in the church who would say, we're going to get behind what the students are giving. And it doesn't have to be one person or one family, but maybe it's uh, the men's, groups or men's ministry or the women's or or the missions department of the church or something that says hey for every dollar the students give we're going to give two or we're going to give five or whatever and we've seen groups do that over the years yeah. so when so when the adults get behind it it champions the students when there's a matching component it's re that really has such a psychological impact on the students cuz you're able to tell them hey every every dollar you sacrifice every starbucks coffee you don't buy Every time you get out and work, it's like your, your gift is being multiplied, which is really mm -hmm. powerful. So, so I'll recap that. Strong leadership, audacious goal, personal sacrifice from the students, and then the parents and adults of the church getting behind. Those are the things we've seen making amazing heartwork experiences.